right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm George and joined by George Papadeus, who is in St. Petersburg, Florida. How are you doing, George? I'm doing real well today, John. Thanks for having me. I uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, and George is CEO of The Hoth. And if you just want to explain to people what The Hoth stands for. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's kind of a fun name that, oh, excuse me, was created uh, back when the company was founded. Hoth stands for hit him over the head. And, and basically the thesis of that is we, when, when the company was created, we wanted to make sure that our clients knew we were going to go above and beyond for them with no matter what, whether it was their results, their deliverable, their experience. Uh, we wanted to make sure that every interaction we had with the client was uh, what we call a Hoth, that we, we hit our clients over the head, not no violence, uh, but just, just giving exceptional service uh, and exceptional results as well. And that's kind of blossomed into, into something beautiful. You know, we, we predominantly have done SEO in the past. Um, that's link building, content offsite, content offsite, uh, onsite, excuse me. Um, we've gotten into reputation management. And uh, as of a few months ago, uh, back in December 2019, we acquired a, a freelance productivity platform uh, called FreeUp. And so now we're also offering uh, freelancer productivity uh, through that right. platform. So a lot of really great things happening and really excited to share uh, what we're doing with you. It's fantastic. And I love the, the company logo, as you can see on George's yeah. shirt there and the man with his club. Um, yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about selling through culture. So, um, George, what does, what does selling through culture mean to you and the Hoth? Yeah, I, I, I love that question. At the Hoth specifically, we're, we're all about our culture uh, internally and externally. I think a lot of companies that, that praise their culture um, do a good job with, with sharing it internally. But what we wanted to do is we want to take it to the next level. We want to make it a Hoth. We want to share our culture with our clients. And, and so what we do with that is um, first, we include our clients in a lot of really cool things we do internally. Uh, for instance, we have a, a conference for our freelancers every year called HothCon, very original name uh, in mm -hmm. St. Petersburg. But we bring our clients, our, our top clients in, and we have them come to HothCon. We have them uh, meet with our writers. We have them interact with, with the sessions. And then we go out with them and, and uh, have a little bit of fun with them. We, we would like to meet clients out at... Um, uh, conferences. We like to send them fun things. I mean, one, one of the cool things that we started back in 2016 was, uh, was swag packs. And what we do is once our clients hit a certain spend level, uh, we'll send them a swag pack. And in the swag pack, it's a branded box. We have t-shirts and a whole bunch of different designs on those t-shirts, mugs, uh, stress balls, pens, basically anything uh, that could be a touch point throughout the day. We even have our own hot sauce, branded hot sauce it's called Hoth Sauce. Again, very original. Uh, but basically... It's we want our, our clients to feel part of the family because that's what it's about for us. We sell through engagement. We don't sell through tactics. We don't do high pressure sales. We want to make sure that when our clients make that purchase decision, they're doing it with, with uh, somewhat of a family member, if you will. And that might be a little too far, but that's really what we try to do. We want to bring our clients into our tribe. We want them to, to feel what we feel on a daily basis internally. And obviously to do that, you have to, I mean, that has to be real and authentic and you have to be able to live it because let's face it, I mean, a lot of, a lot of companies will try and create that kind of culture, but it's very much a manufactured culture. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a really great point. I mean, you, the proof is kind of in the pudding, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. and so when you try to lead through a, a fake culture or try to bring a culture that doesn't really exist or doesn't have the infrastructure behind it, you get called out pretty quickly and you, you, the clients figure it out. I mean, um, it, it's very hard to fake that. Uh, and mm -hmm. so what we do is we, we back it up. I mean, you see our customer testimonials, uh, the reviews um, on, on Google and, and the other review platforms. And, and it's honestly, it just comes down to, I, I know I can call our top clients. I can call them on their cell phones right now and just have a very real basic conversation with them mm -hmm. uh, just about their day, not even about business. It's just because we, we back it up through our processes and we all should back it up just as, as normal humans. And I think that's an important point you just raised there is that you have to have the processes behind it because otherwise it's a nice idea, but if you can't actually execute it, uh, it's not really worth much is it? Yeah, it's not going to scale. And, and that's, that's the name of the game for us is growth. And we want to continue to grow. And with that, you have to have very solidified processes. And even if you, it, 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 I'm sorry, if you don't put the processes behind a high level of engagement for your clients, these ideas, which you just mentioned, which is, is a perfect way to, to phrase it. I'm actually going to steal that from you. Uh, <laughs> It, it fizzles out. It stops after a couple of weeks because of, of just the, the level of tasks that you have to handle on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to a growing company. So yeah, it's, uh, it's very important to have a solidified process. 
Yeah, and obviously, I mean, it, it, as you said, for for growth, because let's face it, I mean, there's a lot of companies start off with a, when they're small or they're startups with this personal touch and really interacting with their customers. And then as they grow, they put bureaucracy and hierarchy and all of that in place and they push they push the customers out at arm's length and before you know it you have yeah they may have that uh, they may have the bumper sticker on their website still but the reality is very different i'm going to steal everything you just said there <laughs> that is the best way to put it and yeah as, as you scale obviously your culture gets diluted as you bring in more people mm-hmm. to the culture, whether it's your clients or internally with your staff the culture does get diluted but um, for us at the Hawk, the way we've combated that is is we've brought on, um, you know, a, a, about forty team members over the last four years. Uh, but every single one of those team members goes through a very uh, strict orientation process so that they can learn and breathe our culture. We have a culture document that uh, I like to say is also living and breathing and is constantly being updated. Um, and then from there, we we basically uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. I don't want to say judge, but we basically review our, our mm-hmm. team on the amount of culture that, that they're bringing to the table internally for our team, but also to our clients as well. And we do that through biannual check-ins twice a year. And we make sure that the, the culture that our, our team is giving off is of standard or, or even above standard. And um, it typically is. And so uh, yeah, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out the team. Because uh, we yeah. uh, I just love when I see interactions with our clients um, that are our culture and, and uh, portray our culture to the clients. And, and uh, man, it just feels really good. So thank you. Thank you to our team. Yeah, that's great. Um, and so, so just to underline an important point that you made there is that obviously if you want to, if you want to have a culture and you want to scale and you want it to endure over time, you have to recruit to the culture, right? You have to actively recruit to the culture. And I think uh, to your point, that also gives people uh, during the recruitment process the option to opt out, right? To sort of go, I'm not sure this is really for me. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of the risks that you take. I mean, we, we have a, a very clear understanding at the Hoth uh, that, and this is for internal team and also for our clients as well, is that th- these folks aren't going to be around forever. I mean, especially right. um, with the newer generation coming into the workforce. Yeah. It's just one of the things that you, you, it, you have to take on as a business. It's, it's one of the risks and having that understanding that not everyone's going to be with us forever from a client side, internal side, I think is very important because the, the strategy that we have, and again, I'm, I'll say it for the third time for clients and internal team, is that we just want folks to leave in a better position or in a better place than they were when they came in. If we've done that, I've done my job and, and we're good to go. So that that's how we live that. Um, so that when we do have someone leave, we, we don't go crazy. Right, right. And and obviously when you, um, you know, when a customer moves on or circumstances change, the same thing. If you can point to the fact and say, well... You know, we left them in a better place than they were in. Then, obviously, they will carry that forward, and they they will help you with um, with references and testimonies, even if they're not a customer anymore. Exactly, and that's that's the whole thesis of it. Is we're never going to burn a bridge at the Hoth. We we are mm-hmm. going to make sure that we keep our relationships as strong as possible externally and internally, because you just never know when those paths are going to cross again. Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned that thing about um, employee turnover because yeah, that is that is a phenomenon that's you know happening happening more and more. And personally, I, I mean, a lot of people stress over things like that. I mean, I personally don't because I just think you know turnover is just a part of business, and it's and some and it's a healthy thing to be honest. You know, just yeah. like regeneration and other things. But but to your point though, if you're going to have people come in and not stay as long as maybe traditionally they might once have. Uh, it means then you have to have your rec- your recruitment, which you talked about, but also your onboarding, and you got to get them productive fast, right? Uh, you have to get them up and running quickly, or you're just going to be throwing money down the drain. Uh, is that yeah. is how I put it? And, and really, what it comes down to is it, again, we'll bring up processes. It's it's how solid are your processes, and and they'll be tested when it comes to turnover. Mm-hmm. Very strictly, you'll see, you know, who's had bad habits in the past, who's actually had great habits, and and maybe they haven't gotten enough recognition. Um, I, th- I think that's an important piece of it. Uh, and then also just taking feedback as leaders. I think it's really important, whether it's someone leaving the organization or coming in, making sure that you have that method to intake as much feedback as possible, just in case there is something in there that may not be your culture, may not be on process. You can course correct it and update that. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things, obviously, that's uh, that's coming out of uh, the current uh, situation that we're in, the, the pandemic crisis, is that a lot of companies are realizing that 
digital and digital processes and all of that are are a lot more important than and than maybe they gave it the credit for before. Maybe they paid a little bit of lip, lip service to it, but now they realize that when you're faced with a situation like this, you really got to be on top of your game. And the work that you do with clients, right? Obviously, there's a lot more competition out there right now for for people trying to get uh, to get noticed mm-hmm. um, virtually. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it has been over the last, let's call it eight weeks, a monumental shift in, in how uh, businesses, you know, one, spend their marketing dollars and two, mm. just operate in a very general sense. And, right. um, it, you know, and decisions had to be made fast. And we experienced our own at, at the Hoff and our clients experience it every single day. And if you're not making the right decision, you you may have hours to either course correct or, or make that right decision because there's just so much happening right now. So what we found is, yes, marketing budgets are being spent on digital spends rather than print spends. Um, mm-hmm. at, a, at a much higher scale really over the past eight weeks than ever before, um, which is exciting for us. But uh, for print, you know, it's, it's showing that it, marketers are now coming to uh, a higher level of sense, if you will, I'm trying to say this diplomatically, where you just, <laughs> from a standpoint, you just get way better ROI than, than traditional standards. And, and that's not just from a marketing standpoint, that's across the board, like I said, with operations as well, is, is that maybe the traditional workforce or the traditional way the workforce uh, has, has been conducted over the past few decades, that's, su- that's, that's really been challenged to the highest extent. And it's um, sort of put jet fuel on that transition, if you will. You know, a lot of people in the past, uh, maybe last year, you, you see leadership development or, or business development consulting videos or whatever. And a lot of it, you know, they talk about in the next decade or in the next two decades, you're going to see a more virtual workforce. Well, yeah. that happened in the past eight weeks. And, and yeah. it's you know, a wild ride to see it, not just from our business, but also with our clients as well, because we try to get as much feedback from them as possible. Yeah, and exactly. And when we've just and we've seen the same thing. As I said to you earlier, we've been running a, a larger virtual company for about six years, and we made that as it was a strategic decision. And of course, when something like this comes along, it makes us look like geniuses. But <laughs> not that we're not. Just yeah. just to say. Um, but to your point, though, I mean, I think there is a fundamental shift going on, and I think it, it, it it's a good thing. And I think what you're what you're talking about here in terms of the culture of your organization, I think a lot of companies now need to look at um, how they can uh, accommodate employees in a better, in a better fashion. Right. And, and, you know, it, it really embrace virtual work and all of that. And I think it also, it brings a level of human. I mean, I think over the last while, I think it's brought a level of humanization because people have had to um, deal with, you know, a lot of chaos going on around them and still try and execute their jobs. And, and I think it's brought out more of the human element that I think people have been craving. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Especially from a management standpoint, as a manager and a leader of the organization, it's humanized me with the rest of the team. And, and I feel that our bonds become stronger. I mean, we, we have a workspace, which which I'm here now, sure. the only mm-hmm. here, uh, which I, 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 at the beginning of this call, I told you, I called dibs, I, I pulled rank and came back in. But, um, <laughs> you know, this, this time has really humanized managers and leaders. And in my specific experience, has brought the bond closer together with myself and the general team while we're the furthest apart we've ever been, which is mindful, uh, yeah. but has been really special, at least for me. And, and, and I know I'm talking about this selfishly, but um, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, uh, it's humanizing at all levels and, and we're capitalizing off of that. We're making sure that our team can see our managers and our leaders as humans and that we, we make mistakes just like them, um, but we're also thinking just like them. You know, we have our own families to take care of right now. We, we um, have decisions that are going to impact um, our, our, the families of our team members as well. It's, just, it's been really cool to, to see that. Now I'm just rambling, but. Uh, yeah. No, 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 it's good. It's good because then I also think then to your point, I mean, you know, the culture of your organization is that, the, you know, you share that with your clients and everything. I think that's something that more and more companies are going to see that, that maybe that more human element that they have ignored, that that's actually something their their clients and customers and prospects have been have been crying out for or will be looking for more and more. So that's something that they actually need to actively expand or extend. Yeah, I think I think you are going to see a shift in um, how you know what the sensitivities are of a client. And for us, what we've experienced over the last eight weeks has been our clients have moved from being you know, price sensitive, which is weird. You would think they'd be way more price sensitive in a time like mm-hmm. this where they're more engagement sensitive. You know, our, our clients and it's, um, I'll give a little, um, 
example, when I, when this started for me as a business operator with our vendors, I just wanted engagement from our vendors. I wanted someone to talk to and see what other problems they're experiencing uh, versus the problems I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our clients. Our, uh, our clients are very engagement sensitive right now. They want to talk to us. They want to see what we're experiencing. We want to see what they're experiencing and want to talk through some basic strategy. But basically when it comes down to the conversations we're having with our clients right now are, are, go way past surface level. We're talking about family. We're talking about the intricacies of their business. We're talking about other departments of their business other than just digital marketing. And it's been really awesome to have that and see that, you know, maybe, maybe we're, we're one of the early adopters that are doing this right because I think that will be the shift going into obviously the latter part of this year, but maybe in the next couple of years in terms of, uh, of a sales strategy is really bringing the engagement at the front end of those, of, uh, those relationship building processes. Yeah, and I'm, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, and we've experienced the same. And it's funny. It's like even if, even if people are unable to uh, maybe execute on something right now, like pull the trigger because maybe they're uh, financially constrained or they're not comfortable with spending the money right this second, uh, they're not just putting a hold on things. They're still discussing the projects, discussing what they want to do, hoping that they can put it, you know, that they can execute on it, you know, in the next month or two or whatever. But I think, I do think it's a change because, yeah, because you're getting much more of an insight into their business. And at the same time, there's a realization that you can't just like batten down the hatches, that you have to find some way to move forward and move through this. That's a great way to put it. And I think you brought up a great point as well. Uh, the clients that, may have paused their spending. That doesn't mean you stop the engagement with them. And I think yeah. that's important to talk about is those clients are still yearning for that high level engagement. And they may not be spending this month. They may not be spending this mm -hmm. quarter. They will come back though. And, and yeah. uh, it's somewhat of an investment, but it, it will come back in the long term. And, and that's something that we try to live by every day. Yeah, no, 100%. I think it will. Um, any last uh, comments, George, on, on, on selling through culture? Honestly, it just comes down to just being yourself. That's what we tell our salespeople. Our salespeople, when they onboard, they have about a month of training. Uh, but really, it's the, they train from a technical aspect. Uh, everything else, we, you know, we make sure we hire great personalities. And, and we want that to be the thesis of the conversations when, when they have uh, the, the onboarding calls with our clients. We just tell them to be themselves. And when it comes to selling through culture, that's all it comes down to is be yourself, yeah. be a human. Um, share obviously what the company has and, and just have a conversation like you and I are having right now. <laughs> that's what it comes down to is just be yourself. Yeah. No, I think that's a, I think that's a great way to end. Uh, just be yourself. Cause uh, like I said, again, I think that if there's one thing that this whole crisis has, has, uh, has shown is that, you know, people just want some authenticity. They just want to connect with people. They want to kind of cut out all the nonsense and the noise and just be able to connect in a, in a, just a basic human level. I agree, which is why, uh, you know, hopefully we can do this again. I, I, I love yeah. this conversation. This is Yeah, great. no, absolutely. It'd be great if you come back. We'll talk some more. Listen, uh, George Papadeus, uh, all of George's information would be in his contributor bio, all the links and everything. But before we go, please do uh, just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your yeah. organization. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's the Hoth, the Hoth.com. Um, you can, you can sign up for a free consultation at any time to talk to uh, all of the salespeople that I've just mentioned on this call, um, they, they're going to give you the best experience possible, uh, whether you purchase with us or not. We just want to have that conversation for me personally. Uh, if anyone has any follow-up uh, questions or, or feedback of this conversation, you can reach me directly at georgeofthehoth.com. Go straight to my phone. I answer it every single minute of every day. <laughs> uh, we, we just At the Hoth, we just want to build as many relationships as possible. If we get some sales out of it, great. If we don't, at least we have a new bridge. So uh, again, John, yeah. thank you. That's fantastic. Uh, John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, or CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.